Good evening, everyone. Before Mass this evening, I'm going to read a letter from the bishop. This is the second time this letter is being read in the parishes here. I read this letter at the direct request of the Most Reverend Donald J. Kettler, Bishop of St. Cloud. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on June 15, 2020, the Diocese of St. Cloud filed a Chapter 11 reorganization case. The reorganization case will allow the diocese to implement the framework for a resolution with survivors of clergy sexual abuse previously agreed upon in May 2020. This will include a consensual plan of reorganization that will provide a 22.5 million trust to compensate survivors. The diocese is committed to providing broad notice of its reorganization case to the public in order to allow all survivors an opportunity to participate in the case and receive compensation. The court overseeing the reorganization case has set a deadline of October 21st, 2020 for survivors of clergy sexual abuse to file their claims in the case. I have asked that this letter be read at each parish in the diocese at least twice before the October 21st deadline. Please inform your family members and others in the community of this deadline. Survivors may file their claims anonymously, and their names and other identifying information will not be revealed in the reorganization case. Anyone who would like more information about filing a claim or generally about the reorganization case 
may visit the diocese's website under the section titled Reorganization. I appreciate your attention to this matter and your assistance as the diocese moves toward the completion of its reorganization case. Sincerely yours in Christ, Donald J. Kettler, Bishop of the Diocese of St. Cloud. Thank you. Welcome to all who have gathered here at St. Michael's as we celebrate the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. During this COVID time, we ask that there is no congregational singing throughout the Mass. We invite you to reflect and pray quietly. The bishop requests that communion is only to be received in the hand. As you leave today, you may drop your collection in the basket at the entrances. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, 
only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it he built a watchtower, and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes. Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing. Break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send down rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, and with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, 
another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So over the past several several weeks in the in the lectionary, the church has given us readings about vineyards. Uh, last week we had we had the two sons, um, you know, just kind of this continual theme. And I think it's beautiful because it's like it's given me a little bit of time just to reflect on vineyards and what the Lord is trying to say to us. Um, I don't know a ton about them. I know um, back at home, my mom actually has a a big grapevine that took years uh, to produce fruit, and she finally produced this really, really good grape jelly this year. So um, it pays off, like this hard work does pay off. It wasn't like choice wine, but it was really, really good. Um, and so it just gives, like, gives me a little taste of what like, a good vineyard is capable of. Um, and I think, I just want to walk through this first reading from the prophet Isaiah again, and just pay attention to how he cares for his vineyard. This is a, it says, he begins, let me now sing of my friend. Let me sing a song to you about my friend. Just like this beautiful, beautiful poem of the vineyard. My friend had this vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. He did all of these things. He did it with such minute details, such precision to perfect this vineyard. He went all in for this vineyard, right? This friend. But he didn't stop there after he did all that hard work. Within it, he built a watchtower, right? To keep it protected from from enemies and other other things that would threaten it. And then he hewed out a wine press, right? He hewed out a wine press. This was supposed to be a perfect vineyard full of, you know, the most perfect grapes for this beautiful choice wine. But then what happens? He comes back, and rather than finding these perfect grapes for this delicious harvest, he finds wild grapes. You can't make jelly or wine out of wild grapes. It would be way too sour, bitter, probably even rotten. He's like, what on earth happened? Like, I I took such good care of this, this vineyard, and now all of a sudden it's wild. It's just wild. Like, what is he talking about? He says that this this vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. This is the story of Israel, right? This is the story of the New Testament. Uh, the Lord took this his chosen people. He prepared them. He released them from slavery, from those chains in Egypt. He brought them through the desert for those 40 years until he got to the promised land. Right? He did all of these things for this beautiful vineyard. He took such gentle care of it. And what happened time and time again in the Old Testament? He would come back and there'd be wild grapes. The, in other words, the people, instead of choosing the Lord, instead of responding to him in gratitude, um, they turned to infidelity time and time again. They turn to wild grapes instead of turning to the Lord and allowing him to run this vineyard. They turned away from God 
instead of running toward him. Um, it's just it's just funny because as you read again, like in the Old Testament, where the proper response would be, thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for me. Thank you. Instead, all the time, it's just like, you know what, Lord? I'm good, actually. I think I'm going to do this on my own now. Thank you. I'm going to do it on my own. And they went and they found other gods and they even made themselves a god in a sense, you know? And it's, it's really easy, I think, a really easy temptation to say like, yeah, yeah, the people of Israel really screwed up. They screwed up a lot. They screwed up a lot. And we can look at that, and we can, you know, and just like from a historical perspective. But I think what Isaiah is saying to us today in the 21st century is that this is our story, isn't it? Like from the moment of our baptism, when that water is poured and when the priest or deacon says those words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, Exteriorly, it doesn't look like a lot, but interiorly, our baptized souls are made completely new. Completely new. We're no longer bound to original sin, that, that sin, right? We're, we're released from all sin. Um, we still have that concupiscence, but we don't have that original sin anymore. We're completely clean. Like, just like to imagine like the most beautiful work of art on earth. Um, maybe like the Pieta statue, that statue in, in Rome where Michelangelo made it of Mary holding Jesus. It's just this perfect piece of art. Even that pales in comparison to what happens to the soul during baptism. Right? It's just this explosion of goodness. And it, what the Lord is doing is he's doing these minute, beautiful um, moves to make this soul clean, to make it new. And rather than turning toward the Lord with everything we've got, rather than saying, Lord, I'm going to give you my yes, I'm going to say yes to you all the days of my life, we start saying, you know what, um, yeah, this is really cool and stuff like that, but kind of lose an interest, you know. I'm going to kind of start choosing other gods, if you will. And that's really what sin is. Sin is when we say, you know what, Lord, I've been made new, but no, I'm going to say no. It's this, this tendency to sin, this propensity toward it, um, that although we've been made clean, there's always that little bit of a temptation which is to say, you know what, I think I can find, you know, better grass on the other side of the fence. Like, I think I can, I can do this on my own now. But again, we're the vineyard, or our souls are the vineyard of the Lord, and he's working on us. He's preparing us for heaven. He's preparing us for heaven. I just love this again, like, how the friend takes such good care of this vineyard, how much work he puts into it, and how seriously he takes it. I think from time to time we had to pause and just reflect, right? How serious do I take the vineyard of my soul? How serious do I take the vineyard of my soul? Do I treat sin just like it's just, I don't know, no big deal, you know, that type of thing? Or do I I really take it, you know, seriously and to say, you know what? Um, The Lord is the most important, the most important being in my life. Uh, And without him, there's nothing like How do we look at our souls? The beauty of this whole situation, though, is even when even when the Lord's just like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna let these people I'm gonna let people trample through this vineyard. I'm gonna I'm gonna let them break down its wall, make it a ruin. It's it's never gonna be pruned or hoed like we're done with this. When it looks like God is throwing in the towel, He never abandons us. He never abandoned the people of Israel and he never abandons us. He allows us to feel the effects of sin and infidelity, but he never lets go of us. Right? Like in the gospel, you have this scene of the vineyard where you think all hope is lost, but then the, the, the man is like, you know what? The father's like, I'm going to send my son. They're not going to touch him. I'm going to send my son. Every single time we sin, that's exactly what the Heavenly Father says. All right? Don't despair. I'm going to send my Son. And Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is always searching for us. He never gets tired of us. See, like the Gospel, um, he's telling this parable to the chief priests and the elders. 
these people who have such hardened hearts. And you'd think that after a while, Jesus would just kind of like, you know, wipe off his hands and say like, okay, you guys are obviously stubborn and I'm done. But not once does he do that. Time and time again, he continues to come back to us. He continues to come back to them and he never stops trying. So today on this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I think it's just this beautiful reminder to say, how am I taking care of the, the garden, the vineyard of my soul? Like, How am I allowing the Lord to continue to cultivate it? What am I doing to cultivate it as well? You know, Do I just let, let weeds grow in it? Or am I just being attentive to it? Because any gardener will tell you that if you let one weed in there, like a lamb's quarter, in like a day, it's covered. It's just crazy how fast weeds grow, you know? So it really does take that special care. One practical piece of advice as to how, the cult, how to cultivate the vineyard, how to cultivate the garden of your soul, is to look at St. Paul, especially in the second reading today. To come back to this Philippians chapter 4 at some point during the week, and just to slowly pray through it. To cultivate the vineyard of my soul, I need to think about good things. To think about good things, right? Whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, gracious. To think about these things. To keep our minds and our hearts centered on the Lord, the one who cares so, so much about our souls. Continue to cultivate um, the vineyard of your soul. Continue to give thanks to God for all the good things that he has done in your life. And today at this Mass, in a special way, um, I think the best way we can cultivate our soul, right? Run to confession and run to the Eucharist. These are the two biggest things. Um, so today at this Mass, just encourage you with me to run again to Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, let's bring all of our needs and petitions to the throne of God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Bishop Kettler, and all bishops, that they may shepherd and guide the Church with the grace of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country as we approach the election, and for all those who serve in public office, that they would have the courage to defend life from the moment of conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the salvation of the world, that all men and women would turn to Jesus with their whole hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence and poverty that displaces so many people from their homes and homelands, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all farmers, for their safety, and for a bountiful harvest, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the consecrated life, priesthood, and diaconate, and for all those preparing for marriage, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, especially for Joyce Beamer, who passed away recently, may they rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our ACC cluster, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Join us now in saying the prayer for our sister parish. Created of God, you made this world and saw that it was good. In your creation, you have given us many cultures. Through this diversity, there is much that you can teach us in our relationships with each other. Today, the Holy Spirit inspires us to new global connections with the message of love throughout the world. We ask that you continue to bless our sister parish relationship between Blessed Sacrament, Orlean, Guinea, and the churches of St. Michael of St. Cloud and St. Joseph's of Wake Park. We ask this to the one who united himself to the whole human race, and who walks with us as we all go to you together. Our brother and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim, save and profess your resurrection. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Donald our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. We would like to remind you that our ACC Parish Hall meeting is set for Wednesday, October 14th in the gymnasium at St. Peter's at 7 o'clock in the evening. We ask that you submit your comments or questions by this Wednesday and place them in the mailboxes located near the entrances of the church. Thank you. And then lastly, uh, do we have any of our confirmation can candidates with us this evening? Is there anybody here preparing for that sacrament? Um, this is, you know, you're probably embarrassed if you are here because I'm going to ask you to stand. So nobody's here. That's fine. We'll still pray for them. So we're going to uh, we're going to be praying for. I think we have. I don't know how many exactly we have, but we're going to uh, pray for them as they prepare for that sacrament. And I invite you to pray with them. Wait, pray for them with me. Bountiful God, we ask your blessing on the young people preparing for the sacrament of confirmation in our communities. Strengthen them and sustain them in their quest to celebrate the presence of your Holy Spirit in their lives. Reveal to them the gifts you have given them. May they continue to learn how to seek peace and live like Jesus. May they embody in their flesh and hearts the compassion and thirst for justice as shown us in your Son. May they delight in each day's revelations and give them an abiding faith in your presence among us to heal and to renew our hearts, our church, and our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please kneel for the St. Michael prayer if you are able. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 